Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Steven, a public relations student. I'm currently in the fifth semester at LSPR Communication and Business Institute under the supervision of Mr. Charles Pumarsi Wright as our lecturer of public speaking and presentation skills, and Ms. Josephine Ruth Kartawaria as my mentor. Today, I would like to talk about public health. First and foremost, I would like to deliver some information about public health. Have you ever wondered what public health is? Public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of communities, including the people where they can live, learn, and play. Some doctors treat people who are sick, and those working in public health try to prevent people from getting sick or injured in the first place. Public health workers conduct a lot of research to educate people about health, what is good and what is bad. And time after time, public health sets safety standards to protect workers and develops school nutrition programs to ensure kids have access to healthy food. Public health works to track disease outbreaks, prevent injuries, and shed light on why some of us are more likely to suffer from poor health than others. Public health is one of the sustainable development goals. And why does it matter? Maybe you are asking? Well, based on the United Nations seat, it is because ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being is important to building prosperous societies. An additional 18 million health workers are needed, primarily in low and lower middle income countries, to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. That's the goal. Now let's talk about narrower objects, our country, Indonesia, do you think we have enough public health value? The answer is no. And I would like to say that one of the factors that we have low rates of public health is our lack of nutrition fulfillment rates. Poverty levels have decreased in the last 20 years, but many Indonesians are still at risk of falling into poverty. Food prices in Indonesia are significantly higher, and as a result, many Indonesians cannot afford a nutritious diet. Between 2012 and 2016, the rates of Indonesian consuming vegetables fell by 5% and the consumption of fruit fell by a good 3%. What is astonishing is that Indonesians prefer processed food. Processed food consumption is increasing and 21% of calories are now from prepared foods and beef fridge. Even though Indonesia's economy has grown dramatically, malnutrition is still a significant problem. Indonesia suffers from high rates of malnutrition, accompanied by increasing rates of obesity. And this means Indonesia is facing a double burden of malnutrition. And these issues show that Indonesians lack nutrition literacy. Nowadays, people tend to scroll on social media and I think socializing an issue on social media is a wise choice, as what Ruang Gizi Indonesia has done since last year. Therefore, my friends and I would research this organization. And we come with research titled Communication Strategy Analysis on Ruang Gizi Indonesia's Instagram in informing the importance of nutrition and daily nutritional needs. We would like to know how Ruang Gizi Indonesia conveys education and spreading information through social media, especially in Instagram. And this research could help Indonesian readers and listeners to be aware of importance of nutrition. So please stay tuned for further information and updates. That is all from me. Thank you.